Hey guys, uh, this is uh, Oshan here from Ingod RC Experience. Coming to you today with something a little bit different. This is actually a um, Carnage NT Truggy that I bought for my girlfriend's father um, Christmas time. It has yet to be used. Um, he specifically requested that I uh, break it in for him as it's his first ever RC car. Um, or at least first ever hobby grade RC car, I should say. Um, I mean, it's pretty basic. I think it's a perfect car for someone um, of a beginner level to an intermediate level. Someone who just wants to try the hobby out um, for the first time uh, without uh, breaking the bank uh, too much. And so uh, let's get it going, guys. All right, let's crack it open. Oh, very, very nice. So as you can see, we've got the, the manual on top here. Let's have a look at that. Oh, very nice. Okay, everybody reads the manual, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, there you go. Bind plug and an antenna tube. Okay, uh, next thing is the car by the looks of it. Oh, no, actually, let's get this box out first of all. Um, what's in here? I'm assuming it's the radio. Oh, and of course, there's a... Bit of sellotape there. Let me get my knife. Knife time. Everything ready to go. Let's get this uh, box open, shall we? Put that down. Ooh. Oh, very nice. Empty box. There it is. So uh, it looks pretty good, actually. Two channel, 2.4 gigahertz. And we've got like a little compartment here. Let's open that up. A little compartment here. Oh, look, you've got your little dials and stuff in there for um, your trim and your um, endpoints, I'm assuming. Looks pretty good. Okay, and to the main event now, guys. Ooh. Let's see if I can get this open. Oh, things off. Get this off. Oh, very, very nice. Oh, I like that a lot, actually, guys. That's really cool. Let me just move this out of the way for a second. It looks really, really nice, guys, actually. For a little uh, for a little RTR. Put that bottom dead center. It's always good to do that to begin with. It looks really, really nice, guys. I have to say, I'm quite impressed with that. FTX Carnage. Looks pretty cool. Well, uh, this is it, guys. Looks really, really nice, I must say. <laughs> yeah. You can see it moves very, very freely. It's actually got a really nice um, free-moving drivetrain, as you can see. Um, everything feels really good, I have to say, for, for a budget RC car, really. It's, uh, it's actually presenting a nice quality to me, at least, at the moment. And as you can see it all the way around. Let's get the body off and uh, see what's underneath then, shall we? There we go. Oh, very nice. So this is the body, guys. You can see that. Looking pretty nice. Looks nice and clean. Very good. And here it is, guys. Yeah, as I, as I suspected, guys, look. Force Models Corporation. I really like the Force engines. I used to own quite a quite a few Force engines. I think uh, back in the days I used to run uh, a Thunder Tiger EB4 eight scale buggy. That was before I started uh, doing all the racing stuff. I used to run a point thirty two Force engine. That seemed to work extremely well. Uh, it was was quite a screamer that engine. To be fair, for its uh, for the price, it was very much a budget engine, but they're very good for their for the price. I have to say, single stage air filter. So I'm sure that's something that can be upgraded at some point. But we'll do the job for the time being. Supposedly these are waterproof servos. And uh, so probably won't be putting that to the test. I don't imagine he'll be running this in water, but you know, it's always good to know that they are at least splash proof. Very nice little um, exhaust pipe there, plastic, but that can always be upgraded. Feels pretty good quality though. Of course you've got the, um, the, f the clutch assembly in there. I have to say, it feels really nice and smooth, guys. 
it feels really smooth. It does, there's no notching or binding or anything uh, at the moment. So that's a really good sign. Shock absorbers, let's see. Oh, feel nice and smooth. Check the rear. Very nice. Got the center diff there. So that's going to be pretty nice. It feels really good, guys. I think uh, it's, it seems very promising so far. Plastic body shock absorbers, but with metal shock caps. Uh, and they're adjustable as well, which I really like. So you can change the ride height if necessary. It's not complicated at all. That's why this is perfect for a beginner. Small little fuel tank there. That's why this is a perfect setup for a beginner. Nothing complicated. It's just basically uh, a chassis with an engine. <laughs> and that's it. You know, it's perfect for a beginner, guys. And it's looking extremely promising so far. See the chassis there. Pretty cool. Guys, well, you know, that's basically it for the unboxing. Let me get everything together so you can see everything. So this is everything that comes with it, guys. Just to uh, give you an overview. <clears throat> there it is, the, the bind plug and the antenna tube. The manual, it's actually quite a nice manual to be fair. It's quite detailed. Uh, plenty of um, explanation in there as to what to do. Uh, for anyone that isn't familiar with starting up your engine or the braking process or maintenance tips. Quite very good manual for a beginner. And they've even given you a manual for the Force engine as well, Force Point 18. So everything you need there to um, disassemble your truck if you ever need to. There it is, the, the uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio. Uh, it's actually quite sophisticated um, for a budget radio. I quite like it, I have to say. That's the car, you've just seen that. This is basically it, guys. Um, I will be doing a break-in video as part of this video, so stay tuned for that. Let's get this car set up, first of all, um, before we uh, get it out and start it up for the first time. Right, guys, so I'm uh, just about to put batteries in the receiver, and I've encountered a little problem. Uh, there's a screw there that I need to undo, but it's been blocked by the um, server horn that leads to the um, uh, carburetor, which is actually quite irritating. So um, I think the best way to do this is to remove the, um, the server horn itself. Um, make sure you keep it in that position. So uh, when you go to put it back on, you know it needs to go into the horizontal position uh, just like it is now. Okay. Okay, so this is it. Take your little screwdriver, nice and easy. Take that screw out. Put that down there. Carefully take the servo horn out like that. Like that, so keep it in that position. And then you can access these screws then nice and easy. That's the way to go about it, guys. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. Um, that's what you're going to be seeing when you open this up. So it's a bit of a jumble in there. Um, what I like to do usually is tidy everything up with a, a miniature cable tie. But before we do that, let's sort out the batteries. Standard um, double A's, put them in all the way around. I'm not gonna do, not, not gonna do that on camera. It's pretty self-explanatory. What I would suggest is just as a top tip from a uh, a nobody <laughs> is uh, to put some uh, electric tape around there just to stop the batteries from coming undone whilst you're going full throttle otherwise you will have a runaway and you know that's not going to be great for any newbies coming in for the first time that's going to be extremely off-putting so make sure you do that with uh, with these uh, batteries uh, another thing I would suggest is if you really wanted to um, I would encourage for you to change this from this to a humpback battery, but um, seeing as I don't have one lying around, um, this will have to do for the time being, okay? Last Christmas you gave me my herd. <laughs> I love that song. Ah, that's so much better now, guys. It's nice to have some uh, order on the cables in the receiver box. Okay, guys, so I've just um, reassembled the uh, servo. 
and the receiver box. Uh, so everything is ready to go now. I've put eight AA batteries in the transmitter. So let's give this a go then, shall we? I believe, according to the manual, it's already been bound from factory. So let's give that a go. There you go. Okay, nice. Now let's give this a go. Power on for the first time. Okay, very nice. Okay, that seems to be working. Got some play there in the brake, which is good. Let's apply some brakes. Ooh, nice strong brakes there. Brakes on front wheel, brakes on rear wheels. Uh, let's check the end points there. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that seems fine to me. There's a little bit of play on the, on the end there, which is uh, which is good. So it's not um, uh, putting too much uh, unnecessary strain on the servo. And let's try the uh, steering. I'll just set the end points on that now. That's fairly easy to do, actually, guys. You can see here. Oh, it's a bit annoying that there's a little knob here. You've got um, numbers. It's probably you probably can't see them. One to six. Uh, six being the highest um, throw on the steering and obviously one being the lowest. So this, so this is six at the moment. Let's give six a go. So you can see when, let's zoom in a little bit here. When we move, the th you can see there's a point where the, the servo actually doesn't influence any more uh, movement, mechanical movement uh, in the steering. So that means you're putting unnecessary strain on the servo. So let's move that down from six to number five, shall we? Oh, that's very hard for you to see. Okay, number five. Let's give that a go then, shall we? Yeah, that's better. Okay, a lot better. That doesn't seem to have an influence on the um, throttle, I don't think. And I don't think you even have an end point adjustment for the throttle, unfortunately. But it seems to be preset at factory correctly. So um, that's, a, that's a bonus, I suppose. See what happens if I turn off the transmitter to see if the failsafe has been preset by factory according to the manual. There we go, perfect. So it's already been done for you. So when I turn the uh, transmitter back on, it comes back on just as normal. Very, very good. Okay guys, so another good thing to check is um, the idle gap opening. I've just taken this air filter off. It is very easy to remove, you just pop it off. Um, make sure you put um, some nice air filter oil in there, um, it's important to do that before you actually run it for the first time. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Good thing to check also is check if the movement, the retaining spring, actually does its job properly. You need, you need to make sure that it actually releases back to its um, previous position. That's quite important and the movement is nice and smooth needs to be at least one millimeter gap there, or 1.5 millimeter gap, I believe. Um, so in order for it to idle consistently and well. Okay, for um, oiling the um, air filter, it's very simple. Just get your air filter oil. Uh, this is just some, uh, an old batch that I found lying around. Um, get your air filter out of its, um, the sponge out of the uh, housing of the air filter there. Pop that to one side. What I like to do is, uh, just to avoid getting my hands all oily, really hard to get that stuff out of your hands, uh, just put, pop this into like a, a little plastic bag, uh, preferably with a little zip uh, housing on the top there. Get your air filter, open the lid, get your uh, oil, I mean, and uh, pop the oil in the, uh, in the bag like that, just a little bit. Just enough to saturate the air filter, close the lid, and then you just squish it around in the bag. Just want to put enough on there just to saturate the air filter in oil. 
uh, to uh, stop any dirt, uh, dust particles entering the engine. It's quite critical you do this uh, correctly, uh, otherwise um, you may find yourself um, damaging your engine prematurely, um, which is obviously not what you want. Especially if you're a newbie, that's going to put you off. You'll never get back into the hobby again, so try not to do that, guys. There you go. You can see it's looking nice and even all the way around. You just want a nice even film saturation of oil. There we go. Perfect. So you just pop that back in, uh, back in here now. Pop it back on the car and you should be ready to go. What I would suggest is you put a little tiny little zip tie around here w once it's on the... Um, the carburetor uh, to stop it from flying off uh, during operation. Okay guys, so let's get on with the break-in.